Good morning. Trust that I find you well this morning as we come again to hear the word of the Lord. We've been on this journey, Transformed to Transform, where we've been talking about the things that God uses to bring transformation in our lives. We spoke about the power of the word, how the word of the Lord comes to bring change, how the word of the Lord is able to bring transformation. We spoke about the power of prayer, how prayer is, does not only change you, but prayer changes things and situations around you. The fact that we are talking about the power, what is that power? Today we want to talk about the source of that power, the source of the power of prayer, the source of the power of the word, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. I'll break it into two this week and next week where we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes to bring change. The Holy Spirit comes to bring transformation. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a man or a woman, they are totally transformed. Many times we live our lives bound by demonic spirits. We live our lives bound by our past. We live our lives bound by sin. But I love this scripture that is in the book of Isaiah 10, 27. The Bible says, In that day, their burden will be lifted from their shoulders. Jesus brings us to a place of invitation. He says, Come. All you are heavy laden. Come, all you who are weary. There is a place where he said, come learn from me, for I am meek. So there is a place where when we respond to the invitation of God, he says, in that day, their burden will be lifted. So I don't know what you're carrying. I don't know what is it that is wearing you today. But there is a day, and I believe that day is today, where the Bible says, the burden shall be lifted off your shoulder and the yoke from your neck shall be broken. Not only will it be lifted, but it shall be broken. There will be no trace because of the oil, because you have grown so fat, because it's like when, you, when a yoke is on your neck and then your neck grows with fatness, which is to do with the anointing, the oil of God. The Bible says, on that day, burdens shall be removed, yokes shall be destroyed. So today, as we talk about the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, in, term, in regards to transformation, I want you to understand, many people don't understand much about the Holy Spirit. There is a mystery around the Holy Spirit. People have no problem sometimes with God the Father. People have no problem with God the Son. But many people, because they don't understand much about the Holy Spirit, because it's mostly referred to as the wind, so people just think, and also the fact that He is a spirit, and many people don't have an appreciation of who the Holy Spirit is. But what I want us to understand is this. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. He was there from the beginning. The Bible says the earth was formless and void. Then the Spirit hovered upon the face of the earth. It is important for you and for me today to understand the desire, the hunger we need for the Holy Spirit. One of the things we need to understand as we deal with the power of the Holy Spirit, especially in our age or especially in our time we are living in, is the time is the age of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is God's promise to the believer. God says, Jesus says, in the, God says in his word, in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So we need to understand that we are living in times of the Holy Spirit. When we look in creation, it was more of God the Father in action. Then the Bible tells us that God sent his son Jesus Christ to live among men. When men when people live throughout the scriptures, we see the acts, we see the activities of Jesus the Son. Then Jesus, when he died, he says, it is good that I go away. Because if I do not go away, I will not send another comforter. Meaning that Jesus himself, he was the comforter. And he then says, I will send another comforter. So the Holy Spirit that comes in is another comforter. So we are living in the time, we are living in an age of the Holy Spirit. So hence, it's important 
important for this generation to understand that we serve one God who manifests himself in three persons. So it is now the person of the Holy Spirit that I want us to look at and to talk about this morning because it is the Holy Spirit that is able to come into your life to make sure that burdens are removed, yokes are destroyed because of the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is able to bring a shift, is able to bring transformation in your life and in my life. So the Bible tells us that Jesus says there are many things that I would want to talk to you. There are many things that I would want to teach you. It's not everything that is written in the word of God that it happened when Jesus time. The Bible is very clear. Here is the thing, beloved. Jesus did many things that were recorded. But the Bible is also very clear that there are many things Jesus did that were not written. If they were to be written, the books of this world could not contain it. Then not only that, there are things Jesus wanted to teach or to say when he was around. But Jesus says, for now you are not able to handle it. But what I will do is I will send the Holy Spirit. Then the things that Jesus says when he comes, the spirit of truth he shall guide you into all truth so the holy spirit is important in the life of a believer the holy spirit is not like a spare tie which you think you can use it or i might not need no you cannot do without the holy spirit he is the breath of God. He is God himself. So I want you to understand, if there is going to be real transformation, if there is going to be real change, we need the Holy Spirit. We look in the story of Mary at the birth of Jesus. Mary was a young lady who had never given birth, who had never slept to any man. She was a virgin. And she asked the question, how shall this be? Seeing that I know not a man. The angel Gabriel says, this is how it shall be. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you and he shall overshadow you. So automatically it tells you that the young lady, his her life was going to be changed. Her life was going to be transformed. And how it was going to happen, the Holy Spirit was going to come upon you. And you could be in a moment, in a time in your life where you're saying, how shall this transformation happen in my life? I'm tired of where I am and I want my life to change. And you're asking, how shall this be? I'm here to say to you today, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, we, especially in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit, people will not be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come upon them now and again to do great exploits. We see how men were changed, how people were transformed every time the presence, every time the Holy Spirit came upon them. The Bible says when it, the Holy Spirit came upon Gideon, he blew a trumpet. The Holy Spirit would come upon Samson. They would do a amazing things whenever the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Even when the Spirit of God came upon people like Saul, the Bible says Saul would prophesy. So there are things that people would do when the Holy Spirit came upon them. There was an unction to function whenever the presence of God came upon them. But we are living in a time, the Bible says, even Jesus himself, he goes to a time where he gets yet to be baptized by John at the river Jordan. The Bible says, then the heavens opened. When the heavens opened, the spirit of the Lord came upon him like a dove. The Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. Jesus even comes to a place in the book of Matthew 28. He says, all power, all authority have been given unto me, which has to be brought by the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit came upon him. So I want you to understand, beloved, even Jesus, even God himself, the power of God, the presence of God was upon his life. This is the reason why Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach good news. He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He has anointed me to proclaim liberty to those that are bound. The presence of the Holy Spirit is able to bring change. The presence of the Holy Spirit is able to bring transformation. The presence of the Holy Spirit is able to do great and amazing things. So here is the thing. Burdens shall be removed. Yokes shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The word of the Lord without the Holy Spirit can just become like a storybook. Prayer without the Holy Spirit 
can just become a ritual. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in our praying. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in our preaching. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in our reading of the word. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in our churches. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit in our time. This generation needs to hunger. This generation needs to desire the presence of the Holy Spirit. So many times when we talk about the Holy Spirit, most of us, we think of what we can do with him. But for this session, what I want to do is I want to talk about how the Holy Spirit comes into your life and how the Holy Spirit brings a change and brings transformation in your life. Jesus says, you shall baptize me with water, but the one who's coming after me shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So here is the thing that I want, John said that, that I am baptizing you with water, but the one who is coming after me, who is Jesus, shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and shall baptize you with fire. Meaning that they were being baptized by the personhood of the Holy Spirit and with fire. So it is important for you, what does it mean to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? It is when God's presence, it is when God comes upon you with his attributes as God. So how we will know that there is the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not just by you speaking in tongues, but it's by you having the attributes, it's by you having the character of God upon you that shows you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I want us to go through the book of uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where we talk about the life in the Spirit. The life that you begin to live in the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, you begin to live a life in the Holy Spirit. Here is the thing that we need to understand, beloved. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall. The Bible says, um, uh, it says here in verse thirteen, "You, my brothers and sisters, you are called to be free." I spoke about how the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. Burdens shall be removed, yokes shall be destroyed because of the anointing, so that you walk in the freedom of God. And you shall not, you shall have freedom to indulge, you shall, you do not use your, but you do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh, but rather to serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment love the Lord, love, love, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, you'll be able to destroy each other. For I say to you, live by the Spirit. The Bible is encouraging us, is encouraging us. If we are going to see transformation, we need to live by the Spirit. But we can't live by the Spirit without the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So the Holy Spirit comes in your life to bring change, to bring transformation. The Holy Spirit comes into your life for you not to gratify the desires of the flesh, which the Bible goes on to even explain what are the works of the flesh. Because the things of the flesh are contrary to the things of the Spirit. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are not under the law. It is important, beloved, for us to understand that for real transformation, for real change to happen, we need not to be bound to be under the law, but we need to be under the Holy Spirit, under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, rage, selfish ambitions, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Many things that are mentioned there which are a result of the flesh. When I see these things, are they not being mentioned among us as a church? They are found among us. Are they not things that we are struggling, many of us? All these things are a result that we are not living according to the spirit. We are living according to the flesh. These that were written and the like and the more etc. Beloved, this day, I want you to understand for real transformation, for real change, for you to be able to see the power, for you to be able to see significant change in your life, you need the presence, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I, when we have all these things, I warn you, and I did before, that those who live by this will not inherit the kingdom of God. When all is said and done, beloved, 
We are on this earth. We are going to church. We do what we do. At the end of the day, we want to inherit the kingdom of God. So it's impossible, practically impossible, to inherit the kingdom of God when you are walking according to the desires of the flesh. So for me to be assured that I will inherit the kingdom of God, the way of God is I need to be under the influence or I need to be led by the Holy Spirit, which is why Jesus says, for as many are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit leading him, the Holy Spirit guiding Jesus and he's saying, we also need to be led by him. We also need to be guided by him. We also need to be influenced by him. Then we shall be able to inherit the kingdom of God. This is what I wanted to talk to us about today. But the fruit of the Spirit is this. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, this is the thing that will make you know that you have the Holy Spirit upon you. Because most of us, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we talk about what we want to do with Him and through Him. But we don't talk about laying this foundation of what you become, the kind of man you become. So let's look at this thing, which has to do with the fruit of the Spirit. Number one, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when we have the Holy Spirit, we have God, and we have the attributes of God. This is what shows our maturity in God. When God says, by their fruits, you shall know them, not by their gifts. We're living in a time where when people talk about the Holy Spirit, we focus on the gifts, we focus on the exploits of the Holy Spirit, and hence many people will operate in the gifts of God, but no love. We operate in the gifts of God, no self-control. We operate in the gifts of God, no gentleness. The Bible says, again as such, there is no law. Beloved, if we are going to change the world, many times the people in the world don't want our God anymore. Because they've seen us heal. They've seen us do exploits. But when they look at our characters, when they look at our lives, they don't see the nature of God. So why we are failing to bring transformation to the world or to the nations or to those that are around us, it is because people are not seeing the God kind love, the God kind gentleness that we are proclaiming. So real transformation then is not happening. Why? Not because we are not gifted. Not because we are not operating in the, in, the, in, in, in the activities of the Holy Spirit. But because we are not allowing the Holy Spirit nature to flow through us. And here is the nature of the Holy Spirit. Love. Which is why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4. It talks about what love is. It talks about if we do all these things, if you prophesy, if you do these things, you are just but a sounding gong if you have not love. Beloved, I'm here to encourage you today. If we are going to see change, if we are going to see transformation, not only in our lives, but transformation in our world, transformation in our nation, these things should be in our lives. If we claim that most of our nations are 80% Christian, 100% Christians. Why is it our world is not being transformed at the same rate that we are proclaiming? Could it be we are not allowing the nature of God? We are not allowing the nature of the Holy Spirit. So beloved, I want to implore you, I want to encourage you. I will talk in the next session where we talk about the things that happen when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. The enablement that comes upon us when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. But before we get into that, I want us to talk about what happens in you when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. You shall be a changed man. You shall be a transformed man. You are moving from bitterness to gentleness you are moving from hatred to love you are moving from lust to to, 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 to to operating in grace you are moving from living a life where there is no self-control to living a life where there is self-control beloved this is so powerful where the Bible tells, goes on to say those that belong to Christ you have been crucified with the flesh and its passions and its desires. 
which is where the whole transformation takes place, which is why Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, that you are able to lay down your lives, you are able to lay down your flesh, you are able to make sure that you die to that which is not of God. And then it goes on to say, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Let us keep in step. Let us keep in tune. Let us keep the rhythm of the Holy Spirit. Here is what the Bible is saying here. When you go into the Old Testament, when the Holy Spirit was with them, because the Holy Spirit was always with them, even in the Old Testament, the Bible says a pillar of fire was with them. A cloud was with them. So when the pillar is moving, they would move. When the cloud by day moves, they would move with the cloud. In the evening, when the pillar of fire moves, they would move. So they would always know where God, where they, where they would always know where God wants them at that particular time because they would look up and see the pillar of fire. They would look up and see the cloud and they would know whether they are in sync with God. But now we have a better covenant in the New Testament. Not only should we walk around looking up, but the Holy Spirit is now dwelling within us. So we must always look and be sensitive and be discerning, which is why I believe one of the most powerful gifts we must desire is not only the gift of prophecy, but is the gift of discernment. To discern where God, what God is, and what God is saying, to discern where God is and what God is doing in our time. So that when He moves, we are moving. When He stops, we stop. We are in sync with God. Imagine how many things we can avoid. How many pain we can save ourselves when we are in sync with the Holy Spirit. There are deals we sign we shouldn't be signing. But because we are not in sync with the Holy Spirit, there are relationships we find ourselves engaging in we shouldn't be engaging in. But because we are not in sync with the Holy Spirit, we are not prayerful to connect with God, to ask God, should I pursue? Should I overtake? Will I recover all? Beloved, what am I saying? What is God saying to us? God is saying this Christianity we're living must be so real, must be so practical that the word of God is in play in your life, that prayer is in play in your life, that the Holy Spirit is able to guide you through the word, the Holy Spirit is able to guide you through prayer. If we are going to bring total change, if we are going to bring total transformation, we need to be open to the leading to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, which is why the Bible says, Be ye not filled with wine to an excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Why it's important for you and for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there in the beginning. The Holy Spirit knows the end before the beginning. So, beloved, the Holy Spirit wants to be involved in your career choosing. The Holy Spirit wants to be involved in your relationships. The Holy Spirit wants to be involved in your day to day. Beloved, I'm challenging us. I'm pushing us. I'm moving us to a place where we begin to have God in everything that we do. Where we begin to walk with God. Where we begin to spend quality time with God. If we are going to see true transformation, we need to hunger. We need to desire the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of God, God with us. You know, when Jesus was around, when he was in Galilee, he was in Galilee. When he was in Nazareth, he was in Nazareth. But now that Jesus is, is giving us the presence of the Holy Spirit, God is everywhere. He's everywhere. How? He's everywhere through us. When you are here, God is there with you. When you go there, God is there. Why? Because we are now, we are now carrying this treasure which is the treasure of the Holy Spirit in earthen vessels. If we can walk around our lives with an awareness that the Holy Spirit is always with us, we shall not sin. Why? Because you know that God is with me. He's not a God who's somewhere. He's not a God who's a church, but it's the God who is there with us. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is coming. The Holy Spirit wants to come in your life. He's saying, open up your heart. Why? To empower you. Sometimes we want to depend on pastors. You want to depend on the man of God. You want to depend on the woman of God. Yet God is saying, all these men and women were given to us to equip us as the saints for the work of the ministry. 
There is a lot of imbalance in the body of Christ where we do not understand where sometimes as men and women of God are busy trying to play the role of the Holy Spirit but without us understanding the reason why we are not pushing people to read the word, the reason why we are not pushing people to pray is because we are trying to make people, we pray for them, we read the word of God for them, we become the Holy Spirit for them. No, that's not the whole issue. That doesn't bring total real transformation. The reason I'm pushing us to say, you got to pray for yourself. The reason I am pushing you, say, you've got to read the word of God of God for yourself. The reason I'm saying you've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit for yourself. Why? It's because the Holy Spirit is not for individuals who are in the top hierarchy of the church. No, the Holy Spirit is for every believer. He's there for you. You can be empowered because of the Holy Spirit. You can be transformed because of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, I would like us to get to a space where you just open up your heart and you say, Holy Spirit, take over my life. And you say, Holy Spirit, baptize me afresh. And you say, Holy Spirit, overshadow me. Holy Spirit, come upon my life. This week, I want you to hunger for nothing else, but I want you to hunger for His presence, to hunger for His anointing, to hunger for His presence. The Holy Spirit must come afresh upon your life. He wants to walk with you. He wants to live with you. He wants to overshadow you. For real change and real transformation, without the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever we are doing is just religion. And religion will destroy you. Religion will change your life from, from the best to the worst. So open up your heart, open up your spirit. Let's pray to God right now. Pray for God to baptize you. Some of you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit years back, but there is nothing wrong today for you to call on His name and say, Lord, fill me up again. Fill me up again. Let your presence come upon me. Let your anointing come upon me. Spirit of the living God, I thank you today for your word. I thank you because your presence is with us. I pray for your anointing upon our houses. I pray for your anointing upon our lives. That grace, that anointing, that power of your glory to come upon us. I pray for every father. I pray for every mother. I pray for every young man and every young woman that may your presence come afresh upon us. May your presence do what no man can do. May your presence do what no pastor can do. Today we ask you, Holy Spirit, come fill us again. Come refresh us again. Come revive us again. I thank you and I honor you. We hunger, we desire your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, I really believe there is no real change unless it is a change that is brought by the Holy Spirit. Go hunger for him this week. I ask you, I beg you, I encourage you. God loves you. Amen.